Welcome. My name is Donita Hinckley, and I am one of the SLDS trainers for the Georgia Department of Education. Today's session will be a TRL overview. During this session, you will learn where to find digital resources, as well as how to create folders and save resources. I hope that you have logged into your student information system and accessed SLDS. If you haven't, please do so now. If you do not have access to a student information system at this moment, you can open a browser and type in the link on the screen, goo.gl slash OF4C capital T capital V. This will take you directly to a teacher's dashboard in our training site. Later in this presentation, you will be asked to complete an electronic sign-in. This is also for those of you who are watching the recorded version. This will be your ticket out the door. We will use that contact information to send you a certificate of attendance. You can share that certificate with your administrators if you need proof of attendance. Okay. This is a hands-on session. I will show you how to do something, then pause for you to switch over to your live SLDS and do that task. When you have finished the task, switch back to the GoToMeeting screen. TRL is the teacher resource link. Instructional resources are available for all users in this area. Currently, there are around 50,000 resources available in Teacher Resource Link. There are two ways to access TRL. One is the Resources button in the blue menu bar. The second way is to look at the gold keys that are in the Active Schedule area. Each gold key will bring up the standards for the selected class. We're going to go in through the gold key. Watch me, and then I will give you time to do the same thing. I'm going to click one of the gold keys, which will take me to the standards for that class. The standards can be copied and pasted, so this is an easy way to get the standards for a lesson plan. I'm going to select a few standards by putting a check mark in the box in front of the standards. As you see, I already have a few check marks because I had been in here earlier. After I've selected the desired standards, I will scroll back up to the top if necessary and click the button that says Load Resources. Now it is your turn. You will switch over to your live SLDS, click a gold key on the teacher dashboard, select a few standards, then click Load Resources. After you have done that, switch back to GoToMeeting. I will now pause for a few seconds to give you time to do that. I hope you have accomplished the task of selecting a gold key, selecting Standards, and then clicking Load Resources, which will bring you into the resource area. You now need to switch back to GoToMeeting so that you can see my screen. After you load resources, you are taken to the resources area. I'm going to tell you some things about the resource list, then give you time to explore. In the resource list, you have tabs. The Student Tools tab is the default tab. These resources are intended for students to consume with limited teacher interaction. Teacher tools are resources that are intended for teachers to use for lesson planning and professional development. Curriculum tools are resources developed by the Georgia Department of Education for educators. The Curriculum Department is currently tagging items they would like to see in this tab, and those will be available hopefully by the end of March. Course tools are resources that are full course packages and objects designed for integration into a learning tool or learning management system. The main provider of these courses is Georgia Virtual. The Folders tab shows learning objects that have been saved by the user in previous searches. The Statewide Saved Resources tab shows resources that meet your search criteria that have been saved by users across the state. I'm going to talk about the columns now. 
the first column has a plus sign. This plus sign allows you to see more information about the specific resource. You can see the grades, the standards, and other tagging information. Clicking the minus sign will close that information up. You have a selection box column that allows you to select the resource for saving. The title column is subject, media type, rating, and usage. All of these columns can be sorted and filtered. A couple of notes about the rating column. You can rate and review resources, and we encourage you to do that. All ratings and reviews are done by teachers, so you can see what others think about a particular resource and also share your thoughts about a resource. Secondly, if there is a problem with a resource, such as you find a file not found error when you go to a resource, please let us know about that by clicking the Report an Issue button or link so the problem can be addressed. Over on the left side of your screen, you're going to see a document map. This allows you to see and select categories for the resources in the resource list. For example, of the 87 resources in my student tools list, 15 of them are classified as activities. So if I click where it says activity, then my list will refresh and give me just those 15 resources. Lastly, to go to a resource, you will click on the name of the resource. Another tab or window will open with the selected resource. So I could click Graphic Map and it will open in another tab. Now it is your turn. You will switch over to your live SLDS. I want you to spend a few minutes exploring the tabs and columns in the resource list and looking at a few resources. I'll tell you when it is time to switch back to GoToMeeting. Time's up. Now switch back to GoToMeeting so that you can see my screen. We're now going to look at the search options that are available at the top of your screen. These search options are always available to you, whether you go into resources by clicking on the button at the top in the blue menu bar or by using a gold key. Search by grade and search by subject both lead you through the search process. You click the radio button in front of one of them and I'll click search by grade. You have a drop down for grades, so you click the drop down, select a grade level. Then you have a drop down for subjects. You select the subject. You have a drop down for course. You select the course. Drop down for standards. You can actually go all the way down to an element level if those are available. At any point in the search, you can click the Get Resources button. And your resource list will display resources that match that particular search. Okay. Search by subject works the exact same way, except you choose a subject first, then a grade level. The advanced, oh, one more thing before I move to advanced search. This search option does, or both of these, do allow you to find things at differing grade levels than the one that you may necessarily teach. For example, if I come in through my gold key for a fifth grade math class, I might need to look at fourth grade in order to find some resources for remediation. I also might want to look at sixth grade resources for acceleration. So those search by grade and search by subject options allow you to do that. Okay, now for advanced search, I'm going to click the radio button in front of advanced search. Now, there are many options available in advanced search and we don't have time to go through all of them, so I hope that you will come back and explore the other options when you have time. We're going to look at two of them today. After you click the radio button for advanced search, you have a search field. And when I click that drop down, these are the different options that I have. Now, the first one I want to show you is Publisher Host. So I'm going to click Publisher Host. 
then I have a drop down next to it. And when I click that drop down, these are all of the places where things are linked from. So for example, I know that 123teachme.com has some great resources I like. I'd like to see what else they have. I can select that, click my Get Resources button, and then I will see all the resources linked from that particular site. Okay. Now, I'm going to show you free text. Again, Advanced Search, click the radio button. In the search field, I'm going to select free text. When I choose free text, instead of a drop down, I have a text box where I can type. I can type a search term here. For example, I could type multiplication. When I click Get Resources, then the list is populated with resources that match that free text search. Okay. Now it is your turn. You will switch over to your live SLDS. I want you to spend a few minutes searching with the search by grade, search by subject, and or the advanced search options. I'll tell you when it is time to switch back to GoToMeeting. Okay, time is up. Now switch back to GoToMeeting so that you can see my screen. We're almost finished, but you do need to learn how to save resources. This feature allows you to save the resources that you like so you do not have to search for them again. You will create folders to organize your resources. You can have as many or as few folders as you like and you can name them whatever you like. No one else will see your folders. Your folders will travel with you if you change schools or school systems in Georgia. Let me show you the process. In the resource list, you will select at least one resource by checking the box in front of the resource. So I'm going to select these first three resources. To save those resources, you click the button at the top right of your resource list, the button that says Save Resources. When you click the Save Resources button, an Assign Resources window will appear. If you have already created folders, they will be listed in the list of folder name. Currently mine says no folders available because I have not created any folder. To create a new folder, I'm going to click Create New Folder. That window will open. You must give your folder a name. You do not have to use a description unless you choose. Uh, remember, this is yours. These folders are yours and no one else will see them. So I'm going to click the name. I'm not putting a description. I'm going to click Save. I see a message. Folder created successfully. That tells me I've made my folder and see my folder is now listed under folder name. Over on the right, it tells me how many resources are in that folder. And it says zero because I have not actually saved my resources yet. I've just created a folder and saved it. To put the resources that are listed on the left into the folder, I'm going to select the folder by putting a check mark in front of the name of the folder. If I had multiple folders here, I could save these resources into more than one folder by selecting all the folders I want. I'm going to click the Save button. I'm returned to my resource list and I see a message, resource assigned successfully. Now it is your turn. You will switch over to your live SLDS. I want you to select at least one resource by checking the box in front of the resource. Then click Save Resources. Create a folder by clicking Create New Folder and saving it. And then save the resources into that folder. I'll tell you when it is time to switch back to GoToMeeting. Time is up. Now you need to switch back to GoToMeeting so that you can see my screen. The last thing that we're going to talk about today is how to access what you have saved. You've saved things into a folder, but you want to be able to get back to that. You may go to My Folders on the top right of your resource list and click it. 
After you click My Folders, you will see a list of any folders that you've created. Over on the right, you do have a Delete button in case you decide that you don't need a particular folder. You also have a View Edit button. The View Edit button and clicking on the name of the folder both will take you into your folder. So I'm going to click on the name of my folder. You're on a folder tab. Here you can change the name of the folder and the description if you choose. Make sure that you do click Save at the bottom if you make any changes. When you click the Resources tab at the top, you will see all the resources that you saved into that particular folder. You can click on a resource from here to access it in another tab or window. Now it is your turn. You will switch over to your live SLDS. I want you to view the resource or resources that you saved in your folder by clicking the My Folders button, then clicking View Edit or the name of the folder to go into the folder. Then click the Resources tab to see the saved resources. We'll just take a minute to do that and I'll tell you when it is time to switch back to GoToMeeting. Now it is time to switch back to GoToMeeting so that you can see my screen. We have gone through the process of searching for resources. Remember that you can use your Resources button at the top or the gold key to access resources in the resource area. We've also walked through the process of how to save resources and then access them again in folders that you've created. Remember that this webinar is being recorded so you can go back at any time and watch it again if there's an area you would like to review. Now that we have completed the session, I need you to complete the electronic sign-in. This is for everyone, even those watching the recorded version. Please open an internet browser and type in the link displayed, goo.gl slash 7p capital J capital F N capital Y. Pay close attention to that URL as it is case sensitive. This is your ticket out the door. When you are entering your information, please be extra careful typing your email address as we will use the contact information on this sign-in sheet to send you a certificate of attendance. As I said earlier, you can share that certificate with your administrators if you need proof of attendance. If you are having a difficult time with the URL link, please email me directly and I will send you the complete URL. Near the bottom of the screen, you see my email address and the email address for SLDS. If you have questions in regards to this specific webinar, please contact me. If you have more generic questions, please contact the SLDS email address. Thank you for participating in this training session. I hope you have found this session beneficial. If you cannot attend a face-to-face -face training on our other training modules, please participate in some of our other webinar training sessions.